Please rise for the 2018 Spring Commencement Academic Processional. The processional is led by John Witte, an alum from the class of 1968 and a member of the Half Century Badgers, a proud representative of all of our Badgers around the world.
please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem performed by Master of Music, Vocal Performance, Class of 2018 degree candidate, Katie Anderson. Good afternoon, and welcome to Camp Randall Stadium and the 165th Spring Commencement of the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Thank you to Katie Anderson for that beautiful performance, and thanks to Professor LaCrone and the UW Band for leading us in. Today, more than 7,000 bachelor's, master's, and law degree candidates will become alumni of one of the greatest universities in the world, making the class of 218 one of the largest in our history. And by the way, 6,520 of you, give or take a few, are right here in the stadium. As you can see, the uh, head of the National Weather Service is a three-time UW alum, so when we told him we didn't want rain, he delivered. <laughs> <laughs> Friends and family have the best seats in the house. That's where fans have been cheering on the Badgers for 101 years. And just for the record, that very first game in Camp Randall 101 years ago was a shutout when we trounced Minnesota. <laughs> to all of you who have supported our graduates on this amazing journey, let me ask all of our graduates here to join me in applauding the friends, families, and supporters out there in the stands. <laughs> Class of 2018, it's been an experience. This class has set new records for community service and helped to make UW-Madison the number one public university in the nation for students studying abroad. You've also helped us consume 400,000 gallons of Babcock ice cream, <laughs> battled for Bascom in an epic snowball fight, and inspired an explosion of UW memes powered by one of today's graduates. Shane Linden, wherever you are out there, I trust that Milk Chugging Teens is going to continue to drive the mean economy. <laughs> you have all worked. 
worked harder than you ever thought you could. One member of the class of 2018 has even set what might be a new record for the number of majors. Daniel Quigley liked anthropology, astronomy, linguistics, mathematics, and physics so much he couldn't choose between them, so he's majored in all five. <laughs> And I might note, Daniel is also the first generation in his family to earn a college degree. So congratulations, Daniel. <laughs> the uh, last few years have been a particularly good time to be a Badger. Many of you remember our Final Four victory over uh, Kentucky in your freshman year. That was pretty unforgettable. Not to mention the back-to-back -back trips to the Women's Frozen Four and the football bowl games. You have helped teach the nation the meaning of jump around. But I also want to recognize that for some here, this is also a very bittersweet moment. There are members of this class who passed away before graduation. They were friends, they were colleagues, and I want to pay tribute to their memory as well. One of today's graduates spoke last month to a group of high school students who was visiting campus. Ross Dahlke told them how odd it feels when people ask him what it's like to be entering the real world. He said, UW grads don't need to enter the real world because we never left it. You've been educated in the proud tradition of the Wisconsin idea, our commitment to public service which is why each of you has spent the last four years learning to address real world problems. Brianna Young came to UW as a posse student. Brianna came as a posse student to study nursing, but some of her most, <laughs> the nursing grads were always wild. <laughs> some of Brianna's most meaningful work has happened outside the classroom working to change public perceptions about the nursing profession and mentoring students interested in healthcare. Last year, Brianna became the first undergraduate ever selected for our Outstanding Women of Color Award. Congratulations, Brianna. <laughs> Kai Rasmussen had a life-changing experience when he started working in our Astro Baton astrobotany lab. He thought figuring out how to grow plants in outer space would be challenging, but it turned out to be an even bigger challenge in trying to explain to his family and his friends what exactly he was doing. So he launched a one-man campaign to explain astrobotany, designed t-shirts, started a YouTube talk show, even wrote a hip-hop song, and got it played at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So Kai, if astrobotany doesn't work out, I suggest a career in public relations. You'd be great. <laughs> for Kai, for Brianna, for every one of you out there, the real world is right here. And my question to you is, how will you stay engaged with that world once you leave this place? It actually gets a little bit harder to make time for real world problems when you're focused on graduate school or building your career and your life. But the world needs you, so I wanna offer you three pieces of advice. First, think small. You don't have to end world hunger or save the planet, at least not right away. Find something close by that you care about and that you can help with in some way. For Angeline Mabutgang, that's been supporting and advocating for non-traditional students. Angeline is an immigrant from a small village in Cameroon where girls had little chance for an education. She learned English not many years ago and earned her degree while raising four children. Congratulations, Angeline. Like Angeline, pick something to work on that you care about 
and are able to make time for in your life. It's always satisfying to work on something, even if it's something small that's a little bigger than yourself. Second, unplug once in a while. You will be amazed how much time you suddenly have when you aren't always on that phone. And I promise that the Reddit memes will still be there when you return. <laughs> you need time to think when you're not always distracted by videos or text messages. This is precious time, and make sure you find it in your life. And third, whenever you have the chance, help somebody else learn something new. You will find that teachers learn as much from their students as students learn from their teachers. And you don't have to be an education major to be a teacher. You just have to care deeply about something. When Andrew Hansen, Justin Beck, and Forrest Woolworth sat where you were sitting just a few years ago, their first thought was, we care deeply about playing video games. And like many of you, they had a fair amount of experience. But they noticed there weren't enough games they could play on their phones, and the ones they tried weren't all that fun. With degrees in computer engineering and computer science, they decided they could do better. Today, we have a business here in Madison called Per Blue that designs video games. They've made headlines all over the country. They've been honored at the White House for their work in support of entrepreneurs, and they're now collaborating with Disney on a new role-playing game. Andrew, Justin, and Forrest are successful business executives and entrepreneurs, but their favorite and perhaps their most important role is teacher. They advise young entrepreneurs, mentor UW students, and guest lecture on campus. They understand that a credential from a top university is more than a ticket to a great career or graduate school. It's a passport to a new world of opportunities to share what you have learned and moving from being a student to being a teacher. 53 years ago, one of the greatest teachers in our history, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr spoke just down the road at the Stock Pavilion. He thanked our students and faculty for their work to register voters and urged the audience to stay committed. As our nation marks the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's death, I want you to take a moment to contemplate what he called life's most persistent and urgent question. That is, what are you going to do for others? If you keep asking that question, you will keep finding ways to use your knowledge and your skills to make the real world just a little bit better. So we wish you all the best. As you move into the next phase of your life, keep in touch. Let us know how you're doing. And remember, come back and visit. You will always be a part of the University of Wisconsin, and I hope that the University of Wisconsin will always be a part of you. I can't wait to hear what all of you accomplish in the years ahead. Congratulations to the class of 2018 on Wisconsin. Now, if you have a phone with you, this time you can take it out. We're going to do one last unofficial portrait with you and your classmates and put together the best set of class photos you have ever seen. I want every one of you to take a selfie or a picture with the classmates around you and tweet it with the hashtag UWGrad. Parents, grandparents, family, friends, that means all of you. We're going to collect them and post them. And while you're doing that, David and I are going to take our own photo from up here. There you go. Great. <laughs> the class of 2018 is going to have the best collection of commencement photos and memories we have ever created. So be sure to visit the web and see all of those pictures. I now want to introduce Laurie Berkwam, Interim Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs Dean of Students and our Master of Ceremonies this morning. Lori is a proud first-generation college graduate who received a BS in Mathematics and Psychology from Truman State, a Master's Degree from UW-La Crosse, and a PhD in Higher Education Leadership from Colorado State. As many of you know, 
After 13 years as Dean of Students, this is Laurie's last commencement ceremony at UW-Madison. She's been selected for a fellowship for the Emerging Higher Education Leaders Program at the American Council on Education and will be leaving campus this summer. We're very proud of her and support her in this next step on her career. During her time on campus, Laurie has been known for some fun-loving videos, and um, I admit I'm going to miss those. She has focused her work on critical issues such as student safety, bias incidents, diversity and inclusion, sexual assault, and the expansion of services to marginalized students. Laurie, I want to thank you for all that you have done for our students and for our community. Please join me in a warm welcome for Laurie Berklum. Graduates, welcome to Camp Randall Stadium and to the 2018 spring commencement of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. We brought commencement back to Camp Randall about four years ago, reestablishing a long time tradition. It's great to be gathered as a community in one place with our graduates, along with their families, loved ones, and friends to celebrate the culmination of your Wisconsin experience. My time as Dean of Students is coming to a close, and like you, I'm entering the unknown. But it's also very exciting. As you begin your next adventure, I hope you'll take risks and won't be afraid to try new things. I've heard a lot around campus, don't go. <laughs> but alas, I must. Um, and I am reminded that life is short, follow your dreams. That's my advice to you new graduates. Don't be afraid to go and follow your dreams. Now at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the members of our official party. I'm going to ask each of them to stand when their name is called and remain standing. And I'll ask the audience to please hold your applause until all members of the party have been introduced. Chancellor Rebecca Blank. Regina Milner, UW System Board of Regents. Margaret Raymond, Dean of the Law School. William Karpis, Dean of the Graduate School. Barry Gerhardt, Interim Dean of the Wisconsin School of Business. Stephen Swanson, Dean of the School of Pharmacy. David Muir, our keynote speaker. <laughs> Linda Scott, Dean of the School of Nursing. <laughs> Carl Schulz. Dean of the Le College of Letters and Science. Soyan Shim, Dean of the School of Human Ecology. Catherine Vandenbosch, Dean of the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. Norman Drinkwater, Interim Vice Chancellor for Research and Graduate Education. Loren Heller, Vice Chancellor for Finance and Administration. Raymond Tafora, Vice Chancellor for Legal Affairs. Charles Hoslett, Vice Chancellor for University Relations. Ian Robertson, Dean of the College of Engineering. Diana Hess, Dean of the College of Education. Scott Achadik, Registrar. Ariella Rivkin, Senior Class President. <laughs> Trina Lasusa, Senior Class Vice President. Rianne Engelke, Senior Class Events Director. Joshua Guzman, Senior Class Philanthropy Director. Haley Young, Senior Class Communications Director. Mark Markell, Dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine. Robert Golden, Dean of the School of Medicine and Public Health. Guido Podesta, Vice Provost and Dean of the International Division. Jeffrey Russell, Dean of the Division of Continuing Studies. John Baldacchino, Director of the Arts Institute. Paul Robbins, Director of the Nelson Institute for Environmental Studies. Anya Walner, Chair of the University Committee, which is the Executive Committee of the Faculty Senate and Professor, professor of English. Steve Smith, Secretary of the Faculty. Peter Kies, Wisconsin Foundation and Alumni Association Board Member. I'd also at this time like to ask the members of our faculty seated on stage to please stand. And finally, 
with the graduates who are chosen by their dean to represent their school or college by carrying its flag in the academic procession, please stand. Please join me in welcoming all of these distinguished individuals. Now it is my honor to introduce Regina Milner, a member and past president of the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents. Regina is a two-time UW alum who earned both a law degree and a master's degree in real estate and urban land economy, economics from UW-Madison. Her academic achievements are all the more noteworthy because she came to us as a non-traditional student returning to school as a single mom with three children. Since she graduated, Regina has continued to be very involved with UW-Madison. She served as president of the Wisconsin Alumni Association and on the athletic board as a community member. She brings a high level of passion and energy to everything she does. Upon her appointment to the UW Board of Regents in 2012, she toured every one of the UW System's 13 four-year colleges where she listened to students, faculty, staff, and administrators. Her energy and her willingness to listen and learn have marked her service on the Board of Regents. I am honored to present Regent Regina Milner. Thank you, Lori, and yes, you will be missed. Well, good afternoon. On this special occasion and on behalf of my Regent colleagues and of UW System President Ray Cross, I offer each of you my sincere congratulations. Today is an important accomplishment. It is the culmination of years of hard work, long hours of studying, and so many sacrifices by those, by you and those who care for you. Bravo. Let me also extend a special welcome to the family and friends joining us for this celebration. We all know that many people along the way help these graduates get to where they are today, providing support in many ways, both big and small, seen and unseen. And we shouldn't forget your professors and so many others who are part of the UW community who have dedicated have been dedicated to each of your successes we have all had a stake in your reaching this big day and we we have already thanked them and we look forward to thinking about them and thanking about them in the years to come but today it's really about our new graduates you the class of 2018 you've done it you are earning a prestigious degree from a world-class university. You are beginning the next stage of your life. Each of you has your own personal story of your journey to this moment. Many of you have come by the traditional route, right out of high school and on to college. For others, the path may have been having more de detours and perhaps more responsibilities. I know mine was such a route. But today I'm going to single out one of today's graduates and I hope he forgives me. Car Sam Carlson. We have a vocal, vocal group from the nurses department. Sam Carlson came to UW-Madison having already seen much of the world. During five years in the U.S. Air Force, the Madison natives served tours of duty in Japan, Kuwait, and Iraq. Post-military, he lived in Kenya where he saw children orphaned by HIV and AIDS, forced into child labor or worse. He and two others, including a Kenyan, social workers started a nonprofit that pays the educational costs so that vulnerable Kenyan students can afford to go to school. Today, 
Action to Africa is a res registered international NGO that is helping dozens of Kenyan families. Sam will graduate this month with a bachelor's degree in nursing. <laughs> and in the spirit of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin idea, he hopes to use his nursing to provide quality health care to fellow military veterans. Congratulations, Sam. And we all know where he's sitting. Sam's story is, of course, unique and his own, but it also serves both as a reminder and a vision of what a UW education means. Like Sam, you are all now at the finish line, which, as it turns out, is really a starting gate, truly a time to take stock and think about the future. Whatever your next move, make it count. Embrace your next stage of life and each succeeding stage with all the passion you can muster. Savor it, take advantage of it, give it all you've got. You'll never regret it and you will regret investing anything less. You all know our world is changing quickly as is higher education. But one thing that hasn't changed and won't change is the importance of a quality institution where dedicated and creative faculty inspire students to want to more, where innovative research expands possibilities, where fellow students challenge and encourage their peers. Just think how UW-Madison's magnificent faculty and staff help you discover who you are. Consider how university research touches communities throughout our state. This wonderful university is a point of pride for every resident in the state of Wisconsin. And as graduates, we are all part of the University of Wisconsin story. And now, you can help ensure that that story is told, a story that spans more than 170 years. A story of a land-grant college, one of the first. Our UW history is one of innovation, inclusion, and most important, the Wisconsin idea. Our university boundaries are the boundaries of our state, the nation, and now the world. I am going to close now by sharing with you one of my favorite quotes from American anthropologist Margaret Mead. She once said, never doubt a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. I believe that. I believe that you, the UW class of 2018, has the potential, the passion, and the power to change the world. I'm excited to see what your future holds. Congratulations again to all the graduates, to their family and friends that are here with us today and who can't be here today, and on Wisconsin. Thank you, Regent Milner, for your remarks. I would now like to introduce Trina Lususa, who will welcome our keynote speaker. Trina is from West Bend, Wisconsin. She is the Vice President of the Class of 2018. Her time with us has been a wonderful example of what we call the Wisconsin Experience, which is our vision of a total student experience, one that incorporates learning inside the classroom and outside the classroom. Trina has turned her passion for the planet into a legacy of environmental initiatives that will help benefit UW students for years to come. She compiled a 40-page toolkit to help our residence hall staff members lead activities and discussions on sustainability. 
She is the host and executive producer of a weekly environmental talk show on our student-run radio station, WSUM. And she helps produce a newsletter of original articles for our campus Office of Sustainability, a role she'll continue to fill throughout the summer. Today, she is earning her bachelor's degree in journalism and strategic communications with a certificate in sustainability. I am delighted to invite Trina to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you for the kind words, Lori. Class of 2018, I see faces of excitement and relentless curiosity. How wonderful it is to be sitting together in Camp Randall, united by our achievement of graduating from a world-renowned university. As graduates of the UW system, we are bound together by the historic Wisconsin idea the notion that what we learn on this campus is meant to be applied to enrich the world around us. That's why this year's senior class pays tribute to the Wisconsin idea and supports future Badgers by funding the Wisconsin Idea Scholarship as our senior class gift. It is a significant gesture of graduating Badgers giving back to future Badgers. Our keynote speaker, David Muir, exemplifies the essence of the Wisconsin idea. Like us, he too graduated from a top university, and he is using his experiences and knowledge to positively impact the world around him. David has won multiple Emmy and Edward R. Murrow Awards for his national and international journalism. He seeks the truth and is fearless about going where the news takes him. From Tahrir Square in the middle of the revolution, to Tehran, to Mogadishu, to the Syrian border. And David's interviews often make global headlines from the first interview with President Trump in the Oval Office to his Emmy award-winning town hall meeting with Barack Obama on policing and race in this country. David is recognized as one of our most visible broadcast journalists. In fact, World News Tonight with David Muir is the most watched newscast in America for the first time since Peter Jennings. <laughs> As a fellow journalist, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our 2018 spring commencement speaker. Usually, he comes to you from the world headquarters of ABC News. Today, we have him all to ourselves. From Camp Randall Stadium, this is David Muir. Thank you, I love you too. You know, I came to celebrate your academic achievements, but I also came because the University of Wisconsin-Madison it's supposed to be a lot of fun. I'm told I have to wait a little later in the day. Thank you, Trina, for that kind introduction. Thank you to Chancellor Blank. Thank you to the senior class officers for inviting me here to speak. And really, thank you for that stop at Mickey's Dairy Bar today. Sorry if I cut the line. I pulled a little rank with the Chancellor. They had a table waiting and the scrambler and the pancakes, and the milkshake. <laughs> but again, I'm gonna stay here for a little later. <laughs> I hear it gets better. It's a privilege to be here with so many of you, the proud parents, the step-parents, 
the family members, the friends, and of course it is a true honor for me to be here to celebrate the class of 2018. I know the senior class officers were likely thinking, you know, who should we get this year? It has to be someone with a lot of time on their hands, someone with nothing to talk about lately. There's really nothing going on these days in the news. Let me just say this though, you will never forget what happened in the world while you were a student here. The election you witnessed and no matter where you stand, who you voted for, what your passions are, these are historic times we find ourselves in. And you know, the one thing that I learned over the last couple of years of doing the news is that when you get a chance to come to Wisconsin, you come. Y'all are important. You know, in all honesty, no, in all honesty, I do want to say this. What a time to be going out into this country, out into this world, and we need your energy, your spirit, your smarts more than ever. And I know that there are aspiring journalists. You put them right here in front of me. And I would say to you all sitting here today, and I know they move the schools around from year to year, thank you for the journalism for me. But there's no more important a time than right now to be a journalist, to seek the truth. But I want to tell everybody here in the stadium today that this principle applies to so many disciplines, to so many roles. And just as you have done here as badgers in your classrooms, I want you to continue to ask the tough questions long after you leave this incredible university. I'm fully aware that as I stand up here before you today, before you and your family and your friends, this day is filled with excitement, with wonder, but undoubtedly it is filled with tremendous fear. Admit it. Fear of the unknown, fear of finding that first job, fear over whether it will all work out just exactly as you have it planned. Well, I'm here today, I hope, to encourage you really to embrace the fear. There will be so many moments in your life when you walk through a door and into something unknown, something new, and that sense of fear really will overwhelm you. And I was thinking as I was preparing these remarks over the last couple of weeks of one of my earliest memories of fear, one of those first doorways I had to walk through. And the memory comes from childhood. I was just four years old. I remember the school bus coming to pick me up, I kid you not, for the first day of kindergarten. I grew up in upstate New York, and so that bus would travel over the hills and through the winding back roads before arriving at school, and I had plenty of time on that bus to second guess this decision to go to kindergarten. I remember arriving at the school and precisely where that bus came to a halt. I sat in my seat, I did not move, I let everybody else get off the bus. One by one the students filed off and there I sat. And the bus driver, she looked at me and she knew she had on her hands a boy who did not want to go to school. She made a deal with me. She called me up, she said she would walk me to that kindergarten class. She said she'd wait at the door and if I didn't like it I could turn around and she would take me home. So we walked down that hallway together, I will never forget it, right to that kindergarten doorway, and I walked into that room. I took about 10 steps in, I looked around me, those little chairs, and then I decided this is definitely not for me. <laughs> definitely not. I turned around, I raced back to that door, and I looked down the hallway, and there was no bus driver. I could see her leaving the building. <laughs> How could she? But you know what? She did exactly what she was supposed to do. She led me up to that door, and the rest of the work was mine. So here we are today, your professors, your coaches, your parents, they've all helped you walk up to that door, and the question right here as we sit, what will you do when you walk through it? As a journalist, as Trina mentioned, I have had the opportunity, the privilege to report from all over the world, and I want to share with you that it's always the children who remind me that the vast majority of people across the globe and across this country share similar hopes and dreams that we actually have far more in common than what separates us. They're, these are universal hopes. And it was four years ago I was reporting from the Syrian border on the child refugees who had no choice but to leave their country because of the war. Their, their homes had been bombed, their schools destroyed, their families were really chased out by the violence. They left behind their schools, their playgrounds, their bedrooms, everything they owned, and they were now living in tents with their families. And when the sun came up, I was there to witness as these children woke up, and they said goodbye to their parents. It was the children, these child refugees, who were going out to work, not the parents, because the farmers there would hire the children. They could pay them less. And after six or seven hours in the fields, 
I watched as the children then skipped across the field on their way to a makeshift school. Imagine that, a seven-hour day picking potatoes in the fields and then a full day of school. And they did it with smiles on their faces. They skipped across that field, they were singing, and I know each of them were just simply hopeful that one day they would get their childhood back. Some of the children I met were orphans. Their parents did not get out of Syria. And I will never forget that those children, there were quite a few of them that would just look up at me and put their arms out. And I would pick them up. And on the wall of the orphanage that I walked through, I'll never forget two words that were sketched right into the wall with a little paintbrush. They said, love me. I still carry the photos of those children on my iPhone with me every day. I have it right here in front of me. And I know that as I sit here today with all of you a world away, those children all have similar hopes and dreams. It was just a couple of weeks ago, I was back in Beirut for the airstrikes on Syria, and while we were there, I decided I want to go try to find one of these kids that we met so many years ago, one of these refugees. His mother had been a teacher in Syria, his father had been a government worker, and when I met them, he was now fixing tires inside a garage that he had found, and that boy, Rami, was sitting in the garage helping his dad. So years later, this was just a couple of weeks ago, we went out to find him, and we pulled into that garage, and Rami's father looked at us, giant smile. Years later, he remembered us immediately, gave me a hug, and he told me that Rami was out in the soccer fields. So we spent the afternoon driving through Beirut looking for little Rami. Field after field, we were looking. And the sun went down, and finally, we found Rami. He's now 16. And his father told me that their resettlement application had just been approved for New Zealand and that Rami would Google on his phone at night New Zealand just to see images of where he might be one day, so eager, so hopeful that he'll go to school and he'll get a job. And I share with you Rami's story here today and the stories of those children who reached up to me hoping I would just lift them up into my arms because I think that it, it really reminds all of us of what we have in common with people really all over the world, the hope of school, the hope of a life ahead with opportunity. I hear it all the time right here in America. For years we've been traveling uh, the country, reporting on families, businesses, determined to make things here. The series is made in America, and we didn't start out by telling people to only buy in America. We all know our economy doesn't work that way. We're in a global economy, but we thought, why not get the conversation started? Have people check a label now and then. It might help a family member, a struggling business owner down the street. So we shot a Made in America here in Madison this morning, and we'll do another one this afternoon before we get on that plane. And what I've heard across the country reminds me that in a nation where there are really so many competing voices right now, that there's actually so much more that we have in common. And I hear from so many proud parents, like the ones who are sitting here, I know moms, dads, stepmoms, stepdads, that just want an opportunity for their children, for all of you sitting before us today. And what I sense as I report in this country is that the young people in this country, your time is here. There is no question. You are the generation who will have your voices heard. I see it in the faces of the young people who are on the news every night. They're taking a stand. They want to make their community safer. They want to make them smarter, more connected, not more divided. And as I've sat here and listened to these speeches already today, it, after all, isn't that the Wisconsin idea? The idea that there is no border no border here at the university, that you're a part of the greater community here in Madison, part of this state, part of this country, part of the world. So I firmly believe that one of the great byproducts of this really tumultuous time in our country is a generation sitting right here before me more engaged than ever. Every night, I do believe that. Every night on the news, I often say I'm lucky enough to have a conversation with America, and it's a true privilege to sort of ask the questions, to call out really the hypocrisy on all sides. But I'm here to say that that's not just my job. That's our job as Americans, to be engaged in the world around us. I just happen to put on that microphone every night. But you know, we live in an age when we all have the power to ask questions. We all have the power to make change. And no matter what you choose to do after you leave this great university, I hope you will remember those kids who reached up to me to pick them up. They didn't have a voice that day, but all of you sitting right here have a voice. You know, we all use our phones to document our own lives, but I'm gonna challenge you today, not just to take pictures of yourselves, but to aim your cameras, your phones, on the people in your community, on the victories, the small triumphs. Use your voice to help those who might need a little help with theirs. I brought my phone here in front of me. 
And I thought I would test this out. I'm gonna point my phone on the biggest victory in front of us here today, which is all of you. It's gonna be the best Insta story ever. <laughs> Let me hear what you got. That's the sound of badgers about to change the world. And yes, that's just a tiny warm up. I'm ready to jump around. But I, I, do, I do want you to remember what I said about fear. I want you to embrace the fear. It's inevitable and it's a true sign of the excitement of the unknown, the challenge to come. I remember being a kid playing in the backyard. I was the only kid in the neighborhood who would go inside when the news came on to watch Peter Jennings. I'm still a nerd. And it's not lost on me that I now sit in Peter Jennings' chair, and I say that to you today not to pat myself on the back, but to tell you that that chair is waiting for you. There are so many roles out there waiting for you, but there will be fear. On my first night anchoring the national news, my heart was pounding louder than the words coming out of my mouth. But I kept going. I have no idea what I said, but I kept going. And I promise you, you will too. And so I just say to you all today, remember the boys and girls, those child refugees who reached up to me with their arms, hoping I would just lift them up. And remember today how much we truly have in common, our hopes and dreams, instead of what sets us apart. And I really refuse to believe that as a country, and your generation in particular, will not stand for the same old divisions. I think you've had enough of that. You are the ones who will take what you've learned here and set out on great new adventures. You will set the examples for the rest of us, and I'm convinced you will conquer your fear. As I started out, for me, it was that kindergarten doorway, the bus driver walking me up to the door and leaving the rest to me. Your parents, your family, your professors, your fellow badgers right here in this stadium have all helped you to get to that door, to get to this moment. Now it's just time to walk through the doorway. And if you look back behind you when you walk through that door, for me it was that bus driver I saw, but I hope that you'll see every single one of us cheering you on, myself included. I'll be so proud if one day my travels bring me to wherever you might end up, whatever community you begin to call your home, to celebrate whatever you undoubtedly will accomplish. How your choices will better the community you call home, and if by chance our paths happen to cross again, we will celebrate together the Badger way and we will celebrate the fear you face down to make it all happen on Wisconsin. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for those inspiring words, Mr. Muir. Our graduates, I know, appreciated them. At yesterday's commencement ceremony for doctoral degree candidates, we awarded three honorary degrees. These degrees are awarded not for the completion of a course of study, but for living an extraordinary life. Linda Thomas Greenfield, a highly regarded diplomat who helped shape US foreign policy in Africa and intervened in numerous humanitarian crises, was named an honorary doctor of law. David Fahey, a groundbreaking atmospheric scientist whose research on ozone depletion has prevented great harm to life on Earth, was named an honorary doctor of science. And Jerome Chazen, an esteemed business person and philanthropist who co-founded the Liz Claiborne Company and spearheaded efforts to eradicate domestic violence, was named an honorary doctor of humane letters. I encourage you to read the profiles in the program of these remarkable people, all three of whom happen to be UW-Madison graduates. I think you will agree that they richly deserve this special recognition. Please give them a round of applause. The magic podium. <laughs> now for the conferral of our graduate degrees. I call upon Margaret Raymond, Dean of the Law School. Candidates for the degrees Doctor of Juridical Science, Juris Doctor, 
Master of Laws and Master of Laws Legal Institutions will please rise. <laughs> Chancellor Blank. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of the courses in law and emerge ready to make the world a more just place. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the law school, I present these candidates for degrees. On the recommendation of the faculty of the law school and under the authority granted by the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Juridical Science Juris Doctor, Master of Laws, or Master of Laws Legal Institutions. Please join me in recognizing our law degree candidates. <laughs> candidates may be seated. I would now like to call upon William Carpus, Dean of the Graduate School, who will present the candidates for master's degrees. Candidates for master's degree will please rise. Chancellor Blank. Dean Carpus. On the recommendation of the graduate faculty, I present these candidates for the master's degree in their respective fields. Master of Accountancy, Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Engineering, Master of International Public Affairs, Master of Music, Master of Professional French Studies, Master of Public Affairs, Master of Science, and Master of Social Work. On the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School and under the authority granted by the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, you will be admitted each to the appropriate degree. Please join me in recognizing the achievements of our master's degree candidates. Candidates may be seated. I would now like to introduce Ariella Rifkin, who will deliver remarks on behalf of the senior class. Ariella of Teaneck, New Jersey, is president of the class of 2018 and is earning a bachelor's degree today in Russian language and comparative literature with a certificate in Jewish studies. She leaves us having made UW-Madison a more thoughtful and compassionate place through her dynamic leadership and commitment to diverse views. She served two years as an elected student government representative and two years as chair of the committee that allocates funds to student organizations. During her time in Madison, she has stayed connected to her faith roots in the Jewish community by taking on multiple roles at UW-Hillel where she currently serves as a student representative on the center's board of directors. She has been a forceful advocate, not just for stu Jewish students, but for marginalized students in general, even when the role has not been easy or popular. She intends to continue her interest in public policy and the equitable treatment of all people by studying international human rights law at Boston University School of Law. I am pleased to invite Ariella to offer remarks on behalf of the class of 2018. Thank you, Dean Berkwam, for that very kind introduction. I arrived here in Madison in August of 2014, after way too many hours in the back of my parents' minivan. I was surrounded by enough stuff to fill probably five dorm rooms. It was clear from the start that I had seriously overpacked. But then I saw that guy across the hall try and fit not one, but two lazy boy couches into his room. Sound familiar? 
I think a lot of us live that experience on move-in day. But then I had one of those moments. Maybe you had one too, where something seemingly small happens, but you just know that nothing will be quite the same after that. I had just finished moving into my brand new, but somehow already dusty dorm room in Witty 3B, when a girl from down the hall came over to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Ariella, I said. She asked me where my name was from. A little taken aback because where I come from, it isn't a particularly unusual name at all. It's Jewish, I said. Her eyes widened. Cool, I've never met a Jewish person before. I realized then that I had left my comfort zone far behind. I am the child of a religious refugee from the former Soviet Union. My grandparents brought my dad over here when he was just 13, without a word of English and with only a few rubles to their name. They were determined to find a place where I could grow up celebrating my identity. On my, on my mom's side, my grandfather was also determined to give me and my siblings access to a democratic society, and so he served in the U.S. Coast Guard. Like many of you, my grandparents sacrificed a lot, and they did so so that I could grow up, as I did, in a thriving Jewish community. That's why being the first Jewish person that some people here would meet has been both the most challenging and the most rewarding experience of my time here on campus. It has been both a privilege and a responsibility to wear my values on my sleeve and to represent my roots. Perhaps you've felt this exact feeling too, as you had the chance to introduce a fellow Badger to your unique identity. What I didn't realize four years ago was that I was going to have my own series of first encounters. Some were more superficial, like my first encounter with that famous Wisconsin cheese curd. I still remember that shock when I heard that first initial squeak but I'm proud to say that cheese curds are now a staple in my diet, and I envy those of you who grew up eating them. But other first encounters were much deeper. I met a dear friend. She's a member of the Ho-Chunk Nation from right here in Wisconsin, and she was the first Native American that I had ever met. Though we are very different, she showed me that she too came from a small but mighty community that taught her to wear her identity with pride. Take a moment to think about all the first encounters you've had here over the years with people who are passionate about things that you hadn't even considered. Being on this campus, I've met Badgers from the Molecular Archaeology Club, the official Dog Petters Club, Badgers from three different ballroom dancing clubs. Badgers who were simultaneously studying for their masters and TA in classes. And yes, of course, Badgers from the famous Wisconsin Cheese Club. I could go on forever. All of us have met students from different religious backgrounds, with different cultural practices, and with different political ideologies. Though we may have argued with each other, Sometimes, even more than a little, we would not be who we are today without those first encounters. Many of us Badgers cannot think of a more tumultuous or polarized time in this country's history or in this world's history. Then, of course, I talk to my dad on the phone and he's like, um, Ariella, have you ever heard of the American Civil War? And as unstable as the world might seem right now, I can't help but think of all the people here today and of all the people who couldn't be here with us today, who have served in the armed forces and might be able to think of a tumultuous time or two 
in this world's history. But in today's world, where nothing is more validating than a Facebook like, and when it is increasingly easy to stick with what we know, we cannot be afraid to be uncomfortable. If being a badger is about the endless process of sifting and winnowing, then encountering different people with different ideas must be a part of that process. And who knows, you might just be the first badger that somebody meets one day. And you will show them that being a badger means having an unquenchable thirst for discourse despite differences and a commitment to finding new experiences outside of our comfort zones. Back in high school, I learned an old Jewish proverb that has stayed with me ever since. It goes like this. We do not see the world as it is. Rather, we see the world as we are. And so, as we matriculate as badgers, may we remember to surround ourselves with people who see the world differently than we do because of who they are. Only this way will we have a more complete picture of the world. And maybe, just maybe, we can begin to understand our place in it. Graduates, in a couple of moments, you'll move your tassel and become part of an illustrious group called UW Alumni. Please turn your attention to the video screens where your Wisconsin Alumni Association will share a glimpse of the Badger community that awaits you. The University of Wisconsin has been a place of learning and discovery, a place where you've made friends and memories that will last a lifetime. For some of you, today is bittersweet. You will be saying farewell to Madison and a community of people who become an important part of your life. The good news is you're joining a worldwide Badger community that stretches from Minneapolis to Malaysia, from LA to Austria, from Sweden to the Swiss Alps. Wherever you go, the Wisconsin Alumni Association will be there to connect you to this family. And remember, no matter how far you travel or how long you've been away, Madison will always be your home. We hope you come back and visit often because as a member of the Badger family, you will always have a seat at our table. At this point in the program, I'm pleased to acknowledge those bachelor degree candidates who have distinguished themselves scholastically by ranking in the top 20% of their school or college, or by participating in the honors program. These students are attired with honor stoles, solid cardinal red, or with red chevrons. I would like those students to stand and join me in recognizing their achievements. Please be seated. Now for the conferral of bachelor's degrees. I call upon Catherine Vanden Bosch, Dean of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences will please rise. Chancellor Blank, Dean Vandenbosch. On the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences, I present candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science, Agricultural Business Management, Bachelor of Science, Biological Systems Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Dietetics, and Bachelor of Science, Landscape Architecture. Candidates may be seated.
I now call upon Barry Gerhardt, Interim Dean of the School of Business. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Business will please rise. <laughs> Chancellor Blank. Dean Gerhardt. On the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Business, I present these candidates for the degree Bachelor of Business Administration. Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Diana Hess, Dean of the School of Education. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Education will please rise. <laughs> Chancellor Blank. Dean Hess. On the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Education, I present these candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, Art, Bachelor of Science, Art Education, Bachelor of Science, Athletic Training, Bachelor of Science, Dance, Bachelor of Science, Education, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Bachelor of Science, Physical Education, Bachelor of Science, Rehabilitation Psychology, and Bachelor of Science, Theater and Drama. Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Ian Robertson, Dean of the College of Engineering. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Engineering will please rise. <laughs> Chancellor Blank. Dean Robertson. On the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Engineering, I present these candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Naval Science, Bachelor of Science Biomedical Engineering, Bachelor of Science Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Science Computer Engineering, Bachelor of Science Electrical Engineering, Bachelor of Science Engineering Mechanics, Bachelor of Science Engineering Physics, Bachelor of Science Geological Engineering, Bachelor of Science Industrial Engineering, Bachelor of Science Material Science and Engineering, Bachelor of Science Mechanical Engineering, and Bachelor of Science Nuclear Engineering. Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Soyeon Shim, Dean of the School of Human Ecology. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Human Ecology will please rise. <laughs> Chancellor Blank. Dean Chim. On the recommendation of the School of Fac uh, Human Ecology faculty, I present these candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Science, Community and Nonprofit Leadership, Bachelor of Science, Human Development and Family Studies. Bachelor of Science, Human Ecology. Bachelor of Science, Interior Architecture. Bachelor of Science, Personal Finance. Bachelor of Science, Retailing and Consumer Behavior. Bachelor of Science, Textiles and Fashion Design. Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Carl Scholz, Dean of the College of Letters and Science. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Letters and Science will please rise. <laughs> Chancellor Blank. Dean Scholz. On the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Letters and Science, I present these candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Arts. Bachelor of Arts Journalism. <laughs> Bachelors of Music. Bachelor of Science. 
Bachelor of Science, Applied Mathematics, Engineering, and Physics. Bachelor of Science, Journalism. Bachelor of Social Work. Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Linda Scott, Dean of the School of Nursing. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Nursing will please rise. <laughs> Chancellor Blank. Dean Scott. On the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Nursing, I present these candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Candidates be, may be seated. I now call upon Steve Swanson, Dean of the School of Pharmacy. Candidates for the degree for bachelor's degrees in the School of Pharmacy will please rise. There they are. <laughs> All right. Chancellor Blank. Dean Swanson. On the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Pharmacy, I present these candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science, Pharmacology and to Toxicology. Candidates may be seated. At this time, I ask all bachelor's degree candidates to please stand for the conferral of degrees. On the recommendation of the faculty and under the authority granted by the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, you will each be admitted to the degree appropriate to the courses you have completed. Congratulations. Class of 2018, you have arrived at an important milestone, the moment when you transition from being a student to being an alum. Tradition dictates that before degree conferral, candidates will wear their tassel on the right side of the martyr board. After commencement, to symbolize your new status as graduates, your tassel is worn on the left. So graduates, please move your tassels. Congratulations again to every one of you. Please be seated. In a moment, our celebration will end with the singing of varsity. And after varsity, please remain standing until the stage party and the faculty have reached the south end zone. Congratulations again to all of our graduates. A special thank you to the family and the friends whose support and encouragement made this day possible. Good luck on Wisconsin, and congratulations one last time to everyone. <laughs> to conclude our celebration, please stand and join Professor LaCrone and the University School of Music Band in singing Varsity. Thank <laughs> you.